Hi YouTube. I just wanted to do a, a comparison here of the, the Wenger Evo Grip S16 versus the Victorinox Super Tinker. <clears throat> so uh, let's get started. Um, the first thing you'll notice is on the, the Wenger we have this nice tab. The ones with the S prefix have that. So they have an Evo Grip S16 and an Evo Grip 16. If you want the locking blade, get the S because that's what that denotes. Um, let's see if I can zoom back here a little bit. So you can see you flip that blade out and then uh, to release it you push the lock in and then close it. And you'll notice also that they put a nice um, detent in the back of the blade so that you, if you do this with one hand it stops there rather than closing on your fingers. It gives you a chance to get it out of your fingers out of the way and close it the rest of the way. You can either do that with your thumb or with your index finger. So that's the that's one difference. Uh, and now compared to that, the Victorinox just has a regular, um, you know, large blade that doesn't lock. I don't know if you can see here. I'll try and line them up, but the Victorinox has a slightly longer blade and a slightly longer handle as well. Okay, so different, a little bit different size locking blade. Now another thing about the the Wenger that's really nice. Oh, and by the way, this is the Patagonia Expedition model. Camera's having a hard time focusing, but you can see it there, I think. And uh, what that just means it's got yellow grips, basically. Okay, now another cool thing about the Wenger is the screwdriver locks. Uh, it doesn't have a liner lock like you see on some of the bigger uh, Victorinox. But what it does is when you push in on it, like if you're really wrenching on a screw, there's kind of a latch at the back of the blade there. And that catches it and keeps it from folding up on you. So that's nice. It's uh, it's pretty innovative. Their, uh, you know, Wenger was not lazy with their with their technology, uh, not resting on their laurels. The Victorinox, by contrast, it locks open pretty firmly, but it can still close up on you. Um, the Victorinox has a a half stop here, which is kind of nice, just for uh, you know breaking a screw loose or whatever. Uh, and another thing about the Victorinox is that it's got the wire stripper notch right towards the uh, it's a little further up where you can get to it a little more readily whereas on the Wenger they put it pretty close to the grip uh, to the scales so that's kind of a drawback for the Wenger can opener we have the usual Victorinox can opener here uh, excellent action on uh, on cans and uh, very smooth it's got this small screwdriver tip here um, you can use it for small flathead screws and a lot of times I've used it as a Phillips screw. You can tell by the little dent there. If I really needed an inline Phillips then uh, you can make that work if it's not too tight. Uh, so what I, what I usually do is just break it loose with the T-handle one if I can reach that in there and then open up this and use that as a Phillips. Alright, the size difference I already mentioned. Um, the Victorinox is a little bigger a little longer uh, but as, as far as thickness goes they're about the same. The Vitorinox tools are a little bit thicker uh, but the grips are thicker on the Wenger. Uh, and they also seem to be made of a, a different material. It's, it's a little softer when I try and dig my fingernails into it so I don't think it's going to crack uh, if you drop it like the, like the Vitorinox would. You can see this one's suffered a drop or two. That Celador cannot take a hit. Uh, this is this is better. Um, the shape of the grip also obviously is a big difference. Um, uh, it's actually it feels better in the hand and it has a dent there and a dent here right where you would hold it uh, no matter which way you have it. <clears throat> um, can opener. I never got back to the Wenger but a typical Wenger can opener. Uh, no screwdriver tip so you lose that functionality. There's uh, nothing you can do about that but on the other hand it's actually sharpened like a kind of a chisel knife edge and that's actually pretty sharp so you can use that for some uh, you know scraping and, and the tip is really sharp too so if you need to pick or scrape at something it would be a good tool for that small blade 
the Victorinox, they have the usual small blade. Uh, very handy, kind of. Some people use this as their main blade and then hold back the large blade for, you know, food prep or something like that. So um, I've kind of enjoyed having that, but I could do without it. <clears throat> so when I saw that the Wenger hasn't got a small blade but a nail file, I thought that was pretty cool. It's not that I file my nails that often, but uh, you can use that on plastic, rubber, whatever. I don't know how many things I get with plastic these days where there's all these sloppy molding marks that, that need to be filed down. Uh, and then also, since it's, not, since it's not sharp here, it's got this nice pointy tip, which you can use as a, a number one Phillips, inline number one Phillips. And if it's a deep cut head, then you can use it as a number two Phillips, uh, again, once you break it loose with this, because I'm sure that won't handle much torque. So that's kind of an extra tool on the Wenger compared to the Super Tinker. Uh, I think that's about it. The, uh, the number two Phillips is, is about the same on both of these. Uh, the awl, yeah, I should mention that. <clears throat> on the Wenger, it's actually just an awl. Just like if you had an awl in your toolbox, it's not sharp at the edges, it's just sharp at the tip. And it's not even really super sharp at the tip. I guess they're trying to strike a good balance between uh, ruggedness and, and usability. So uh, I think for anything I use it for, it would it would work pretty well. Um, the Victorinox, though, has the typical Victorinox uh, all, where it's it's ground sharp on one side here. I don't know what's with this hollow grind here, but. This is, uh, if you need to drill a hole in your belt or something like that, then this is actually is going to work better. Because not only will it punch through, but then you can actually cut and enlarge the hole with it. So I find that a little bit better on the Victorinox. And the Victorinox has a hook. Um, a lot of people don't think that's useful, but if you just keep in mind that you have it, um, I think you'll find that you use it more than you thought you would. Sometimes there's a piece of wire or something that's kind of recessed where you can't grab it with your fingers, but you can get that hook right in there and yank it right out. Last thing is the toothpick and tweezers. So uh, with the Victorinox, it's a standard fare. They're on the outside of the handles. Uh, nice little units. The Wenger, and I kind of like this too, they put them on the end of the handles. Kind of on the inside. So they don't, they don't ruin the looks of the knife as much. You know, it's got nice clean lines here. Pull those out. No plastic head, they're just, it's just spot welded together here. Let me get, see if my camera can focus there. There we go. Not really. <laughs> and then um, the toothpick is actually sharper than on the, um, the Victorinox. I don't know if you can tell here, but it's a little thinner and a little sharper. So, but they both work fine, so no complaints there either way. Uh, if I had to pick one, boy, I'd be I'd be hard up choosing. But right now, you know that the the, uh, the Super Tinker used to be my favorite pocket knife for for many many years. It just seems to have a really good combination of tools, and it doesn't cross that three layer thick uh, level that makes it you know more clunky in the pocket. But uh, if this didn't have sentimental value to me, I probably would go with the Wenger, believe it or not. I've been a fan of Victorinox for a long time. I think their their stuff is generally a little better, but in this case, the Wenger, mostly because we got this extra tool here. Um, <clears throat> the locking blade is a really nice feature. And also the automatic locking flathead screwdriver is also really nice. And also it's a slightly shorter package. Uh, even if it is just a tiny bit thicker because of the grips. And one thing I forgot to go over was the scissors. Uh, you know, on the Victorinox we have the usual scissors. Uh, very good quality. Um, nice and easy to get to. Smooth operation. That spring looks like it's kind of a liability there. And if you hit it from the side, you can bend it and damage it. But, uh, you know, it works fine. So, no complaints there. Now with the Wenger, this is the one penalty you pay for the uh, for the the blade lock. Here's the uh, the unlocking button, which when you push that, you can see all it does is push out the the spring. So there's a latch on the back of the blade. Wait for it to focus here. So the liner latches on that, 
and then in order to to let it loose you push this it pushes the back spring out and lets it close but this thing uh, the, the lock release here sticks up a little bit past where you would normally go to get the scissors so if you don't have any fingernails uh, it's going to be pretty hard to get to those scissors. You need to have at least a little bit of nail. You don't need as much nail as I have here, but once you have that, if you have that, it's uh, um, you know, not it's not bad to get the scissors. It's a little harder than if the lock weren't there, but it's not like you're going to be fighting to get it out or anything. Um, the Wenger has the nice uh, spring that's uh, it's sprung internally, and it just has the lever externally. And you can see here that there's a little bevel on the side of this and a matching bevel here so that the spring bar stays in alignment. And then also, again, we'll see if the camera can focus here. The Wenger's got a serrated edge. Wenger says that it's self-sharpening and serrated. Um, I don't know about the self-sharpening. That sounds a little too good to be true, like perpetual motion or something. But what's neat is the serrations grab things. So if you're cutting stuff besides threads or paper, um, you know, I cut a lot of cable ties. The, the serrations tend to grab it. And uh, whereas on the Victorinox, when I try and cut a cable tie, it just wants to slip right out as I squeeze it. This kind of grabs it, and it's much easier to cut things that are, that are tougher than it is uh, with the Victorinox scissors. So the scissors on the Wenger Evo Grip S18 are, are a little better, in my opinion. If you don't need the locking blade, uh, just get the Evo Grip 16 uh, because then the lock will be out of the way. The scissors will be easier to get to. Um, and of course, you give up that locking blade, but not everyone feels like they need that. Um, I, I've only had a, a blade close up on my hand once on a Swiss Army knife, and it was, I was, you know, kind of chopping away at something. I shouldn't have been doing it. And I hit the back of the blade on the back stroke, stroke and closed it up on my finger, and that was not a pretty sight. But... Uh, you know, I just feel a little more secure with the locking blade, and it's kind of nice because Victorinox, uh, they never saw fit to give us a locking blade on anything but their biggest models. Wenger, here is something, this is only a three and a quarter inch knife, and it's got a locking main blade, an automatic locking screwdriver, so it's, it's a really nice feature grip. If you go up to the S18 or the 18, then you get a, you add a saw. So you get another layer and you add a saw to this. It becomes even a little thicker to pocket carry. By the way, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this lanyard. It's kind of a frou-frou color here. I got it lashed together here with a uh, with the uh, twist tie. And I've got some paracord on order, but this was, I found this was a cheap at the hardware store. Nice nylon uh, rope, uh, but you know, color's a little Frulati. Thanks for watching.